everyone. Uh, this is Dimitri from Dimitri's Travel and Tips. And uh, today I'm here to talk to you about alternative travel and transportation. Coming to you from not so sunny Cocoa Beach, Florida in the US. Um, it's kind of the early morning. The sun hasn't really parted the clouds yet. It's a little cool, but obviously not too cool because I have the short sleeves on. But anyway, <clears throat> let's just get to it. Okay, so the first uh, sort of thing I'm going to talk to you about is ride sharing. So what is ride sharing? Well, it's basically uh, when you traditionally is when you ask your friends or your family, you all go on a trip and you kind of split the bill. You know, you pay for gas or whatever. Somebody pays for something, another person pays for something else. Um, in modern times though, uh, most uh, people around the world, I think there are applications and websites you can go on and basically it's like a message board and you can say, oh, I'm trying to get from here to here. And the other person might say, offer up their car and say, I'm driving from here to there. And you just message each other, get into contact, figure it out. Maybe it's for free. Maybe you pay for gas. Maybe you buy food. Who knows? It's different for everyone. But it's a really convenient and cheap way to get around the country. In fact, I did this uh, and got around uh, the entire South Island of New Zealand. All right, next up, there is driving from point to point. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean, there are people who buy cars or, you know, drive somewhere and then have to fly out, but then they need to get their car back, right? They can't tow it, it'll cost them a million bucks. So what they do is they also have little message boards and basically they'll pay people or sometimes just pay for the gas and expenses that you incur um, to drive the car from this place to that place and it's great you know uh, you can if you do this you can maybe go from California to uh, Maryland or you can go from Paris to uh, I don't know, Lithuania somewhere, or China, wherever there's a road. Um, so it's a very convenient, very cheap, easy way to get really far. Um, of course, it's not as fast as flying, but it is an alternative way, and sometimes you get to drive some very cool cars, guys, because these people are usually pretty rich. Um, but anyway, next up, you can if you're doing longer term travel, like one month, three months plus, maybe not one month, that's too much, but maybe three months or more traveling, you can actually go online and buy a used car from somebody um, and then at the end, sell it. Sell it to somebody else or sell it to the dealer. You know, you might even make a profit. Most of the time you won't, uh, but you will save so much more money than just, you know, renting a car. If it's someplace that you have to rent a car or you really want to rent a car, you know? Um, and it's like you're at home. You have your own little personal car and you're not paying every day for it, so it's great. Um, I, I know some people also in New Zealand who did this and they saved thousands and thousands of dollars. And obviously there are also buses, guys. Uh, these are very cheap, very affordable options in many countries around the world. Um, in not every country, but in some, you can actually get it something called an overnight bus, though. And this is where, instead of having to pay for like a hotel to sleep or something, and then get up and really early and get the early morning bus, you can actually go at night time, like, 8 to 10 o'clock at night or something and the bus will start going and you just won't stop and you'll actually have like a bed or something like this and you can sleep um, this is a really affordable and really alternative way to travel so you can get places technically 
not that fast because it's a bus, but you're sleeping through most of it, so it feels like you can get quite fast, you know? Make the most of your time, right? <laughs> okay, next one. Now, I talked about overnight buses, but did you know there's actually also overnight ferries? So you can get on the ferry at night and then sleep. This is usually not included with a bed unless you get a fancy option. Um, and in fact, you'll be in chairs and stuff like this, but some people get creative. They bring sleeping bags and little blow up things that don't take up too much room. You can make it work. Uh, this is also another option because ferries are traditionally quite slow, uh, but it's again saving you on accommodation costs. So it can be pretty good, guys. All right, and now this next one is not necessarily something that alternative, but it's more of a trick. So if you guys know Skyscanner, the website where you look for flights, hotels, all this kind of stuff, um, you can actually choose a destination and then, you know, you can only do this on the computer, so you can't do it on your smartphones, but uh, you can choose your destination and then you hit cheapest month to travel and it'll give you the cheapest options to go to that place. You have to be a little bit more flexible, obviously. You can get some very, very, very cheap tickets and if you don't care where you go or when you go, you can also say, take me anywhere. There's a button on Skyscanner where you just says anywhere. And then also check the cheapest month box. So you can go to the cheapest place at the cheapest time of the year, you know, from where you're flying from. Um, I have not actually done this personally, but I have looked and checked this and it does in fact work. And I know some other people that have done this and you save, oh my God, it's so much money. Obviously, if you have like a nine to five and you have to tell people ahead of time when you're traveling, maybe it's a little difficult, but hey, if you have a more non-traditional job, non-traditional hours working from home, you can go places for dirt cheap. Trust me guys, this is a big one. Now, uh, staying in the vein of flight travel, uh, you should check the outgoing and the incoming flights, you know? So, sometimes to go to a place is, you know, five times more expensive than leaving the place. Uh, for example, I recently went to Jeju Island in South Korea from the mainland. Now, getting to Jeju Island cost me about $80 but leaving only cost me $15. So, if you can find some other way to get there that's cheaper, you can save a lot more money. Um, so like, if I had, had more time, I could have taken the bus down to the shore, gotten a little ferry, and then just taken the cheap flight out. Um, and obviously, I didn't have that luxury at the, at the time, but, you know, and if there's not, if it's not an island, you can just drive there and then fly out. Maybe with that point-to-point -point travel or the overnight bus or something. Huh? Huh? <laughs> so you can save a ton of money like this. Just do your research, guys. I always tell people, plan ahead. Check all the details. I know it can be boring, but it saves money. Okay, next up on the list, guys, is car camping. Now, this is not luxurious. This is quite uncomfortable, honestly, in my opinion. Um, but you can go and drive around, and depending on your local uh, and state and federal laws in the country you're in, you may or may not be able to just sleep in your car somewhere on the side of the road or on a patch of land in the wilderness. Pay no money. Um, this isn't really about traveling so much as saving on accommodation. Um, a few times this happened to me in the U.S. and I had to sleep in my car. Uh, it was quite uncomfortable. It's, it was both hot 
and cold at the same time. But um, there were no other options other than some $100, $200 hotels in the area. So I just bit the bullet and slept in my car. Now if you do this, guys, you have to be prepared with like a sleeping bag, you know, block out your windows, things like this. You don't want anyone trying to break into your car or something like this. Make sure to park somewhere safe, you know. Use common sense. Um, but anyway, um, this is a good option if you don't care too much about your comfort. <laughs> Next up, though, is hostels. Now, everyone knows about hostels already, but what you can do is you can try and stay long-term at the hostel, like for a month or more. And they actually offer you discounts the longer and longer you stay. And on top of that, if you want to stay somewhere for a long time, you can actually try and get a job at the front desk or something like this and you usually get a free room, maybe you get a free meal, something like this, and they pay you. So, I mean, you have to deal with crazy people a lot, but you also get to meet lots of people. Um, so there's pros and cons depending on your personal preferences and your personality. I would love to do that. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. One day. Okay, next one, guys. Camping. Uh, this is the old tried and true one, right? So basically, you're camping somewhere. You save a lot of money this way. Some, some places let you camp for free, although it's not many places. Uh, usually you have to pay some kind of fee. But there are like passes and programs that you can get into that'll save you money across like camping in a country, you know, or in a specific state province. Um, if you can find one of these, you can save a ton of money. If you like camping, that is. I personally hate camping with a burning passion, but I know a lot of people like it. So, camping. Classic, tried and true. Next up. Okay, this one, guys, I was terrified about it first, and I really recommend you use a lot of common sense. Don't just willy-nilly do this, but hitchhiking. Hitchhiking can be a great and fun way to get around if you are doing it in the right way. Um, I'll make another video about this, a short video about this in the future, but basically guys, use common sense. If you don't feel safe about getting into someone's car, don't get in. <clears throat> you know, there are crazy people out there, so you never know what's gonna happen. But you get free transport, you get great conversation usually, and you never know where it's gonna take you. You know, the world is your oyster, and doors open when you talk to people. Okay, we're getting towards the end, guys. So the other option, guys, is biking, or motorcycles, uh, or the little Vespa scooter things, you know? Um, you can rent or buy these things, uh, for, you know, a fairly affordable price uh, compared to renting a car or something like this. And you can get around pretty cheap because they're light, you're light, you know, so you're not going to use up that much gas. If you're traveling light, then you can just take a backpack or, you know, in your motorcycle, you usually have like a little back container area. Plus, you can have a backpack. It just depends on what you're doing. And you can get around fast, easy, freely, not worry about parking too much. Obviously, the bicycle option is gonna take you a really long time and physical exertion. The other two are more easy going, but it's a trade-off and some people like to exert themselves this way because then they can, you know, not worry about going to the gym for one. Uh, but anyway, all three are perfectly great options and I can go over the pros and cons if you'd like, let me know in the comments below. So there's something called WorkAway. Um, and there's other programs like WorkAway where you can actually go and stay with someone in their home or in a little separate thing that's near their home. Um, 
and you do kind of like volunteer work for them. Maybe working on the farm, maybe teaching their kids English, maybe cooking and cleaning, kind of a maid, maid service kind of thing. Uh, maybe you help them build a house. Who knows? It could be anything and everything. But they'll say, hey, we'll provide you with a bed and showers and all this stuff. Or, uh, you know, room and board. You know, you'll also get food. Sometimes it's once a day, two times a day, sometimes three times a day. And some people even pay you on top of that. Um, that third last one is not as common, but it can happen. Um, so check out these services again use common sense if the person seems like a dick you know don't go there and if you're feeling uncomfortable at any point you can leave because you there are no contracts involved it's just an agreement between two people but now the actual last one guys and one of my favorites I talk about it all the time is couch surfing so you can go on couch surfing I think they have a very small fee per year now because of uh, COVID. I think it's like $15 a year or something. And you go on, you have profiles and everything, and you can stay with people uh, for free. Now this doesn't mean you're just freeloading on them. You need to have a sharing experience. You need to share stories, culture, you know, something from yourself. Maybe cook them some food, maybe get them some beer. Buy them dinner, you know. It's, you know, bring them a gift. It's really whatever you want. Um, and whatever you guys can come to agree on. Uh, it's a very open service. I love it. I always talk about it. And this is one of the number one ways that I travel. And that's it, guys. Uh, these are my suggestions for alternative travel and transportation. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.